Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be all about just an update on the aquaponics system. We're going to check on the fish, we're going to check on the vegetables. We seem to be growing more and more every day. We're also going to show you some upgrades that I did to the system, um, both to the aquaponics and even to the aquarium. Um, so uh, while you guys watch this clip, I'm going to pack for my trip. So here we go. So to start off, we're gonna look at the the garden, basically uh, all the vegetables. So here you can see the lettuce. Um, that's our mostly that's butter crunch lettuce, red romaine, more butter crunch, and I believe this is actually red romaine over here. So the thing that I noticed about lettuce is that they're the first to sprout. But they take longer to grow because their their roots take take a little bit longer to grow out. So that's the issue that I'm having over here, is that, um, is that the roots are just taking a little longer to just to basically build out and, and I'm waiting for them to go vertical. These seem to be doing a lot better over here, um, but we'll see how they do. The whole purpose of this is to feed myself and I'm also gonna use some of the lettuce to feed the the fish. So now we're gonna go up top and take a look at cucumbers and tomatoes. So as you can see, the cherry tomatoes are doing fantastic as always. Well, this is, um, I mean, you can see my hand. You're looking at at least five inches um, in the height. That one's also growing very tall as well. This this one actually here is grow was actually shorter than this one over here um, as of last week. So the one thing that I have noticed, I don't know if you guys can see it, uh, I can't even see it. Um, but um, they are starting to grow vines. So you'll actually be able to see it with the cucumber plant. So if you look, come on, focus, focus. If you look right there, you will see a little vine and it's starting to wrap around this lattice. So I built this lattice. So um, because once these get start getting a certain height, they will need support. And that's why I built this lattice system here, which hangs from the top of the greenhouse. So there's, uh, this is, this can actually, this is paracord and I believe it can hold like 1300 pounds or something like that. So um, I have six of them. Not that the PVC can hold that much weight, but it's uh, it's structure for that for these things to be able to grow vertical, and then once it gets to the top here, they can kind of grow out. So we'll see how well that works, but um, we are starting to see vines grow. I don't know if you guys can see right here. There's a little vine right there, right in the middle of the screen. It's getting kind of hard to focus here on that little bitty little bitty vine, but you can see it really growing right here. This, this guy right here, right there. There's a vine right there. So it's looking for something to attach to. So it'll eventually find the lattice and then it'll help grow up. I know I saw one, oh, there is one on a tomato. It's very small though, but they, um, they will start growing um, vines and they'll start attaching to the lattice. So these guys are doing fantastic. So let me take you over to the other one and I'll, and I'll show you an update on the peppers and such. So as you can see, the peppers are also doing pretty well. The dill was moved over here, the parsley, the basil, they're all doing well. I have a, I have a lettuce plant here. This one's actually doing pretty well. Um, it's growing probably, it has better structure than most of them. Here we're looking at some banana peppers, some cayenne peppers jalapeno pepper plant right here right in front is doing pretty well as well so you can see jasmine rice is growing in the back so as you can see doing very well the and it's helping to filter out the the aquarium water now i want to show you guys something new that i just built and that is here so as you can as you remember as you remember this used to be a 10 gallon aquarium 
and I kind of got tired of having the 10 gallon aquarium and just having it not do anything. So I actually made another bin. As you can see, there's some empty holes. Still trying to figure out what I want to fully grow in here. But this was just planted about three days ago, uh, four days ago. So we have some beefsteak tomatoes. I uh, have some spinach. I have a uh, Paris Island Romaine, which seems to be growing f pretty fast, actually. I have purple peppers, spinach, zucchini, which hasn't sprouted yet. The cucumbers are just starting to sprout here, as you can see. And then a couple, of, and then we have a couple of the, the jasmine rice, and then uh, and then I have a pepper from up front. So what this is mainly going to be, as, as like I stated in the previous video. I plan on donating a portion of my uh, my vegetables to the local food pantry and this is what this is going to be for mainly is 90% of what's going to be raised in this tub is going to be donated um, whether it's weekly or monthly depends on how um, depends on the harvest of the vegetables so that's what this is going to be used for and you know I, I, I try to stay true to my word you know, you know I don't always get it right but I figured um, this would be the best way to utilize the spaces to be able to grow more vegetables since I have the same amount of fish in this aquarium then um, you know like the other aquarium on the other side um, I figured I could still grow double the vegetables and it seems to be doing very well so um, it's built a little differently I used clear PVC as a drain um, I used a little bit different fittings but it, it's actually hooked up to the same exact pump I put a T in there so everything seems to be working great. So now let's move on to the fish. So here we are at the uh, 30 gallon long and these fish are just kind of going crazy here. So it's probably because they are hungry even though this should, they should have been fed this morning. I have an automatic feeder, but it doesn't seem like, oh, there they go. So as you can see, they are ravenous. So, um, one thing I found, I've, I've kind of laid off the, the algae discs because it was creating a lot of algae, tons of algae. So, this aquarium's been a little bit harder to keep to keep up with because I think it's a little small, because it's smaller than the other aquarium. So, I'm gonna give them a little bit more food here. I have to kind of figure out how much um, food to feed these guys with the feeder now, because it doesn't, feed as as you can see it's not very consistent but I don't but I also know that this thing can overfeed I've seen it overfeed so let's see as you can see, oh, there we go so that should be a, a decent amount for for one feeding so these guys eat a ton now so as you can see they're they're getting to they're about two inches now um, doing very well Catfish are doing very well. I did just clean this aquarium a couple days ago, and it's already getting a little murky So I might do a quick water change today. I do leave for Minneapolis today this afternoon, so I kind of just have to Figure out timing and I, I just don't, don't want to make I want to make sure that this water is safe for them for the next week But as you can see doing very well eating eating a lot so um, let me take you to the other aquarium. So here we are at the original 40 gallon tank. Um, as you can see, these guys are doing fantastic as always. So aquarium is a lot better in terms of water quality. It's a little bit, for some reason, it's a little easier to manage this aquarium than the, than the 30 long. Uh, I'm not really sure why. So these guys are hungry and this feeder, I'm just, it's like so I bought these feeders from Amazon and unfortunately it's like hit or miss it's either they get they feed too much or not enough so I'm trying to trying to figure this out I'm trying to because they have this little manual opening at the top I don't know if you guys can see but there's this little opening here that you have to adjust but so I mean it's like too much or not enough so I just opened it up a a hair so that should be okay I might have to do that twice um, 
for the feedings. So, um, fish are doing fantastic. So I actually just measured these guys with um, with just a regular tape measure. I just put it up to the glass. So here I, I can show you. I just have a you know just a regular tape measure. They get a little skittish at first. They don't really know what a tape measure is. But as you can see, some of these guys are definitely over over three inches. Like the one back there swimming is about three and a quarter inches. This one is about three, oh, three and a quarter right there. That one's about three and a quarter. This one's about a three. That one's probably about a three. Yep. So here's the thing. So according to Lakeway Tilapia, which is where I bought the tilapia from, once tilapia reach about four inches or a little bigger, they become sexually mature, which means I have about five or six fish in here that are right on the verge of becoming sexually mature. So it's gonna get kind of crazy because I think within the next month to six weeks, they will be ready to breed, um, which is insane. I wasn't expecting them to be able to breed till like February. Now I can suppress that by using water temperature and pH, but uh, I think I might wanna just start breeding. It's gonna take a couple months for the fingerlings, to, I mean the fry to become finger fingerlings and get to be about an inch. However, I'm also in the process of getting my permit to become a fish farm, a licensed fish farm in the state of Wisconsin so that I can actually sell and ship fish. So that is in the works, um, waiting for some paperwork to come back. So I'm hope hopefully I'll get approved, especially since I'm not using uh, lakes and ponds to do this. Um, they, in the state of Wisconsin, they do worry about tilapia invading because there are certain places in Wisconsin where people have released tilapia into the main waterways and these guys eat like crazy. Um, then again, for the lake that I'm on, wouldn't be a bad thing because they eat a lot of algae, they eat a lot of greens, and we have a lot of seaweed um, and algae in the lake that I, that I live off of. So um, these guys would probably help, but I don't want to break any laws. So that's the big thing. I'm all about conservation. I'm all about protecting the environment so that all of us can enjoy it so i'm not you know that doesn't mean that i don't eat fish i love fish i love eating fish i love freshly caught fish um it's just you know it's about being responsible so i want to be responsible i don't want to you know make this worse for for wisconsin in the next 10 15 years because these guys um they they breed like crazy so they breed like rabbits when when they become sexually mature and as you can tell like I used to have this little plant here used to go all the way up to the top. They've been munching down on that. They kind of they destroyed this back plant. I don't know what happened there. So the other plants though are still doing well. These are all live plants. Most of which I have grown from a bulb. And now they are this. I have no idea what this tall, skinny little plant is. It's really not doing anything. So we'll see what happens. But yeah, this this aquarium's doing pretty well. I just cleaned it. it. Has I've had algae issues, but not since I've kind of cut back on the on the uh, the algae discs. So just resorting more to um, feeding bloodworms, uh, freeze dried bloodworms, and and the pellets. So they're doing fantastic. I actually just started feeding them a little bit of lettuce, which they seem to be eating. So we'll see. I think the the bigger ones will will probably take to that faster. So I, I want to show you guys something new. So so give me a minute here, and uh, which will be just a second for you guys, but uh, I'll show you guys something new. So here's the latest addition to the Valor Aquaponics setup at my house. And this is a 29 gallon aquarium, which happens to be right next to my furnace. Once again, I don't have a ton of room. So the fact that I, I was able to move some stuff around and managed to find room to add another 29 gallon aquarium is pretty big for me. So this, I'm not gonna have it fully up to, I'm not gonna fill it all the way up to the top. I do plan on having a cover for it. Um, I'm just gonna get some more plexiglass that, that I purchased from McMaster. So this light is a little bit different. This is a Hyger light. So I seem to like Hyger quite a bit. So these biofilters in the back, those are all Hyger. I have Hyger in all three aquariums. Um, this is a Hyger light. All of my air pumps for all three aquariums are Hygers. And the reason being is because I like their quality. I, I didn't know about them prior to getting into the aquariums, but I read the reviews 
um, I did some research and they came back very favorable and so I want to give them a try now I am not sponsored by Higer I they don't give me any products I I get nothing for this so I can just I'm only basing this off my subjective opinion and my observations that they seem to provide um, pretty good um, aquarium equipment so I'll put the links below for for the bio filters and stuff like that so these filters back here they have little clay media balls on the bottom and then these these are sponges they give you two packs so they give you two pairs of sponges um, which will help grow bacteria and then they help filter so he actually uses the air bubbles he uses air to suction in water it comes down through the bottom it comes up and sprays out the top you can actually have that underwater i i wanted to create more bubbles so I, I left that up at the top it seems to do very well um it helps uh build up that nitrifying bacteria which will help break down the ammonia which will help break down the nit uh, nitrites into nitrate or nitrate into nitrite um so what's and then i got the, this new led light the this is different than the other lights right now it's set up on it's it's on a white with with some blue spectrum so i'll show you some different options here so we have this is like moonlight and this is just full on white but i seem to like the blue a little bit better it, it kind of resembles more of natural light so so i have the aquarium currently set up for 83.8 i don't know if you're going to be able to focus with all this bright light but it is set up for 83.8 degrees right now i'll probably have to raise it up a hair more um i have four inch pvc in here i have two of them and then i have the clay pot here and this is meant for breeding so those uh five to six tilapia that are on the verge of being um uh, sexually mature i'm gonna actually move in here the week of thanksgiving since um i should have off on thanksgiving um i'll probably move them on thanksgiving or maybe that wednesday that wednesday evening i will have to sex them and i'll have to move them in here so you you only want to bring one male and the rest females uh because if you bring two sexually mature males into the same tank and you have it set up for them to breed they will they can potentially um fight to the death so i don't want that to happen so what i will end up probably doing is once i move those five to six fish over here as long as they're the correct the correct proportion of males to females um i will actually lower the the temperature of that fish tank the bigger fish tank so that um they don't become as sexually active so i'll probably bring it down to um somewhere in the high 80s or uh, not high high 80s high 70s um is once you start getting 80 and above that's when you they really start to um to get sexually active so so the goal is to be able to breed them so once so usually the male will hide out here the females will hide in the pvc until one or a couple of them start wanting to breed then the females will actually come over here they will sit in here with eggs they'll actually they should take technically drop eggs into here which the male will fertilize and then she will come back pick up the eggs put them in her mouth so that at that point i will have to remove all the fish <coughs> except for the except for the female that has the eggs and then i'll have to separate her from her eggs um or i could wait till they hatch which i should probably do wait till they hatch and then I can remove the female and I, then I will leave this tank to be the first tank of the new hatchlings and then they will grow in here for till they're big enough that I could either sell or hopefully by then I'll have my commercial space so I'll talk about that uh, right now I, I'm gonna go upstairs um, but for you it's just gonna be a second but for me it's gonna be a few minutes so I'll go upstairs and talk about what I want to do so to continue from that clip, so what the goal is uh, with the breeding is I, I want to not only breed tilapia um, to sell to help bring in revenue for Valor Aquaponics, it's also to breed for my own system. I can tell that these fish are very hardy. 
They come from great genes. Um, they grow ex extremely fast and they are producing a lot of results, a lot of great results uh, with the vegetables. So I wanna keep them, I wanna raise them. I'm going to need thousands to to make my dream come true. So I'm gonna need these guys to breed um, a lot and then um, if I have, you know, if I have extras, I do want to sell them to people that want to get into aquaponics or maybe you want to get some larger ones to, to feed. I do plan on selling some locally, not this original batch, but the, but the later batches. I do want to um, sell those to local restaurants and at farmers markets and stuff like that. So um, in order for me to do that, I have to get commercial space and that is why I am working my tail off guys so I work a full-time job so I'm actually I just packed to go to Minneapolis for this week I am leaving in a couple of hours actually so by the time you guys watch this video I could probably be on the plane flying to Minneapolis um, I will be there all week um, and I also work a part-time job and the part-time job is really to help uh, start putting some money aside because I need to get um, a larger commercial space. I already, I've already realized that this system is very successful, um, but I need space. I don't have space here um, at my house, so so I need to start putting money aside, and I can't fully rely on YouTube to help pay for that because I'm still not monetized, guys. I, I'm more than halfway to getting the amount of subscribers I need, but my my watch hours needs to increase dramatically. If you've seen previous videos um, or uh, other videos from um, other influencers, I don't c consider myself an influencer. I just a guy um, coming to you guys through YouTube to, to spread the word about aquaponics, to talk about sustainability and things like that. So I don't consider myself an influencer. I don't ever wanna really be labeled that. Um, I don't ever wanna get free stuff to be, uh, and demand free stuff and all that stuff. I don't want to be that typical um, what everybody views as an influencer. So um, so the goal though is if, if I can start making money off of YouTube, all of that will go back into um, paying for the storage unit, uh, not a storage unit, but paying for a commercial space. So, you know, like a warehouse, a heated warehouse space that has access to um, a sink and, and water as, um, as well as heat. And then paying for all the equipment, it's going to cost thousands of dollars to pay for all of this equipment pvc pipe motor uh, for uh, pumps you're talking about valves you're talking about um all the wood the hardware you know even screws are expensive guys everything costs money so um i don't have tens of thousands of dollars sitting around in a bank account i am not a wealthy guy i do work my tail off um and like i said i you know i'm not i'm not just trying to mooch off of youtube here and mooch off of you guys but if you guys want to help the easiest way you can help me to make this become a success is to watch the channel, watch the videos. Um, I know sometimes they get long, but they, they have a lot of useful information. Please share the channel with your friends and family, um, to those that you think, and even post it on social media. You know, help me help spread the word. And um, I mean, maybe you are a millionaire. You know, you just happen to fall upon my channel and you want to help me out hey i have a patreon page otherwise you can contact me directly at the link right here it's valoraquaponics.com you can find my contact info information right there um and everything that that i raise goes into the aquaponics system and like i said you know with that brand new um tub of vegetables i do plan on giving at least 15 to 20 percent a minimum 15 20 percent of my harvest every year to local food pantries so that um, people that are struggling financially can have fresh vegetables to eat. Um, and hopefully once I get commercial, I can start including some fruits, you know, strawberries. I can include more, you know, we're talking, going from you know, dozens of pounds of food to thousands of pounds of food that I can I can deliver, distribute um, locally to um, not just in the Lake Country area, but to Milwaukee, to Racine. So these are areas that are really struggling financially in some parts. So your help can go a lot, can go a really long way. So, so please help me out. Please share the channel. If you haven't already, hit subscribe. Uh, make sure you hit that bell so that you get notified of every new video that I make. And you know, like I always end my videos, be the change that you wish to see in the world. I'll catch you guys later.